What's up, future respiratory therapist? I got an endotracheal tube with me today. Let's talk about how to assess the endotracheal tube position for your patient who may be receiving mechanical ventilation. Let's dive in. All right, as I said today, we're talking all about endotracheal tube positioning. Before that, head over to respiratorycoach.com, check out the TMC CSE boot camps, your resources to aid you, assist you, help you in becoming an RT you want to be by passing those credentialing exams on your first attempt. Now, this is an x-ray, okay? And we're going to leave this x-ray up here, but before we jump into that, I'm going to talk about the endotracheal tube, okay? Now, forgive me, this endotracheal tube does not have a 15 millimeter adapter on the end of it, so I apologize for that, but it still serves the purpose of what we're going to be talking about in this video, which is all about how do I assess the position of an endotracheal tube once I put this endotracheal tube into or inserted into a patient placed within their trachea? And the answer to that question is, is understanding the anatomy of the endotracheal tube is what will get you there. There are a lot of markings on an endotracheal tube. There are a lot of pieces and elements to it. But the one we're talking about today is this blue line that runs right down the center of this endotracheal tube all the way to the very tip of it. So that blue line right there, oftentimes you may also find it on the spine of the endotracheal tube. Either way, it protrudes all the way down or extends all the way down to the tip of the endotracheal tube. Now this is very, very important because when we understand uh, 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 radiographical terminology, then we know that radiopaque means that when we take an image of this, a radiographical image of an, an endotracheal tube, that radiopaque line is gonna show up as being a white line because it's radiopaque. The word opaque means increased density, more whiteness. And so we know that that's how we're gonna be able to identify that without the radiopaque line, it would be very, very difficult, if not impossible, to identify where the endotracheal tube is on an X-ray or even on a CAT scan. And so that is why uh, we have these on these tubes is to aid us in that. Now again, this patient does not have an endotracheal tube in their airway. I did this intentionally because I want to point out to you that the first thing that you have to be able to do after you understand that the radiopaque line is what we will use to identify uh, uh, positioning of the endotracheal tube within the trachea is you have to be able to identify where the carina is. And so we know we're putting this into the trachea, but where it's at in the trachea matters. And so we know, according to Egan's, that when we assess for tube position, ideally, ideally, pay attention to those small words, right? Ideally, the tip of an ET tube should be positioned in the trachea three to five centimeters above the carina. And so we know that's our general ideal space for our endotracheal tube for most of our patients. The question is, is above the carina. That right there tells you that you have to be able to identify the carina. So let's look at this x-ray and let's see if we can identify the carina. This is sometimes a challenging, um, sometimes a challenging uh, uh, element for uh, students that are like, I can never find the carina. And to be honest with you, it can be difficult, okay? But the more you look, the more you practice, the easier it will get. Here's what I do, okay? I look at the trachea up here and I track it down. And as I track it down, there's going to be a place where I see where it goes down and into the right. Now, once I see the right coming off, then I'm just going to track back up and look for the left. And so I come back here and I see right there is the left. So where these two meet, approximately the carina is, actually that's not the carina. If we come up here, this is the right, this is the left. It looks like the carina is right about there. Okay. So if I had an endotracheal tube in this patient, I would be looking to measure from the carina up to the tip of the endotracheal tube or from the tip of the endotracheal tube, the distal tip 
down to the carina, and that should measure approximately three to five centimeters. Now, let's look at one with um, with an actual. I'll put a put a tube on here so you can see what I'm talking about. Now you see this one shows kind of similar, kind of the same chest X-ray, but now I have actually identified the carina for you. And so we see the carina is right there, and we see this white line. Now again, this patient didn't have it in the tracheal tube, so I had to simulate one, but that's what it would look like. You would see a white line coming down, and then what we would do is come over here and go, okay, what is the distance from here to here? And again, we want that approximately three to five centimeters. I know you can't read that. That's three to five centimeters is what we're looking for, okay? Now here's what I like to say. Just a quick rule of thumb. Because what we know is if we go too far, we can end up in the right main stem. If we're not far enough that we can be way up here, that's gonna be dangerous because we're at a higher risk for uh, uh, an accidental or a self-extubation because our endotracheal tube is not in the right position, okay? We're also gonna have more wasted ventilation being higher up in the trachea. So we understand that that's a problem. What I typically do real quick when I'm looking at it for correct placement of an endotracheal tube is alarms go off in my mind. Once I identify the carina and then I see my clavicles, I should be in this window. Now, once I'm in that window, I'm still gonna ensure that I'm three to five centimeters above the carina. But if I ever see an endotracheal tube above the clavicles, that becomes a priority to fix. If I ever see an endotracheal tube below the carina, outside of this window, down here or up here, priority number one, I gotta get that endotracheal tube adjusted because we are either right main stemmed and we don't want that because no ventilation is happening to the left lung and probably over distension on the right lung. And if I'm way up here, again, I don't want this tube to come out. I, I, don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't want that. I don't want this, an accidental dislodgement of the endotracheal tube and now we have an emergency, we have to reintubate, things like that. I want to avoid those. So I'm going to get this endotracheal tube back into the correct positioning, which is three to five centimeters above the carina. Let's look at one that is not positioned correctly. It would look something like this. Now, I'll give you a second here. You can pause this video if you want to and just look at this x-ray and ask yourself, where is the endotracheal tube positioned? And what we're looking for is the tip of it. Is it three to five centimeters above the carina? And the obvious answer is absolutely not. When we look at this x-ray, what we see is, is that we have a radio-opaque line coming all the way down here and stopping right here. Now, one of the key things to note is, is that you can somewhat, not always, but a lot of times you can identify if the endotracheal tube is in too far and in the right main stem because you will see the movement of it as it comes down. It will slide or curve over to the right side. Why? Because we've gone into the right main stem. So you can see that's exactly what happens on this x-ray. The tip of the endotracheal tube is right there. You say, okay, well, that's fantastic, but where's the carina? Well, if you work back up, you see that this is the right main stem. The left main stem comes off right here, so the carina is about right there. This is where we are on this x-ray. We are right main stem, and there's the left bronchus right there. Now, here's what's important to note here, is you see, when you understand this, and you say, okay, okay, I get it, we're right main stem. But for just a second, Joe, tell me why right main stem is a problem, and this x-ray illustrates exactly why it's a problem. You see, look, we've got good aeration over here on the right side. We've got, well, I'm not going to say great, but we've got air. We see lung markings, we see lung fields, we see aerated alveolar units here on the right side. The left side completely opaque. Why is the left side completely opaque? Because it is atelectatic. You have left-sided atelectasis due to a right main stem intubation. The radio-opaque line is what helps us identify that that's what's happening here. So it's super important to, to, to keep that in mind. What is that blue line on the tracheal tube? And you can see it. it. This much is out of the patient's mouth. You'll see it all the way up to the proximal end and extends all the way to the tip. And you use that 
to identify this right here to take better care of your patients. So that is uh, assessing in the tracheal tube positioning. Remember, approximately three to five centimeters uh, above the carina, according to Egan's uh, I'm Respiratory Coach. Stay right here on YouTube with me. If you haven't already, hit the subscribe button, the like, leave me a comment. Tell me about uh, a time maybe you identified a patient who was right main stemmed, or maybe an endotracheal tube that was excessively too high and not uh, positioned correctly, and you did something to initiate the finding and solve the problem. Uh, come follow me on Instagram at Respiratory Coach, TikTok at Respiratory Coach, LinkedIn at Joe Lewis, respiratorycoach.com, your place for the resources you're looking for to pass those credentialing exams on your first attempt so you can be the RT you want to be. Remember, average is easy. Don't be it.